Today on Flipping Science we're looking at finding oxidation states and oxidation numbers. Um, this is a handy thing to do because it tells you how many electrons are being lost, gained or shared with other atoms in polyatomic compounds. Um, it also gives you a hint about what's going to happen in terms of a redox reaction. Some periodic tables they have the oxidation states on there. So here we have for example nitrogen 2 plus minus 3, 4 and 5. Fluorine and oxygen, fluorine minus one, oxygen minus two. And we'll see where that comes from in a second. So there's a series of rules that we follow to figure out the oxidation number of a substance. Um, we'll go through these in order. So the oxidation number of neutral atoms or molecules of an element is equal to zero. That means something like, say, nitrogen gas, the total oxidation number would be zero. Oxygen gas, the oxidation number would be zero. Right. The oxidation number of a monatomic ion equals the charge of that ion. So if you had Fe plus 3, the oxidation number of that one would be plus 3. Um, in neutral molecules, the oxidation numbers add up to 0. So if we add H2O, the oxidation numbers there have to add up to 0 because there's no charge up here. If we were looking at uh, polyatomic ions, it has to equal the charge on that ion. So the oxidation number has to equal the charge on that ion. So if we had, say, sulfate, SO4, 2, minus, the oxidation number there would be equal to minus 2. Then we're going to very specific examples. So fluorine is always minus 1. Oxygen is always minus 2, except in peroxides. Group 1 ions are always plus 1. Group 2 ions are always plus 2. Halogens are always minus 1, and hydrogen is always plus 1, unless it's with electronegative elements down there. So let's look at some examples of the questions that you're likely to get. So here's a question. Find the oxidation number of sulfur in sulfuric acid. The way you do this is basically year 9 level maths. So we're going to call our unknown x up here, and we've got numbers of... Uh, the other bits, so two hydrogens, four oxygens, and we know their oxidation number from the rules. So, uh, what we're going to say is two times the oxidation number of hydrogen. Now, if we go back to our rules, we can see uh, hydrogen is always plus one, unless it's with those. It's not really with those, so in this case, it's going to be plus one. So, two times plus one, plus we've got one sulfur is equal to x, plus we've got four oxygens, so four times the oxidation number of oxygen. If we look at our rules, the oxidation number of oxygen is always minus two, unless it's in a peroxide and that's not in this case. So four times minus two. That has to equal the oxidation of the charge on the complete thing. And we see there's no charge up here. So in this case, that has to equal zero. And then we just solve for x. So 2 plus x minus 8 equals 0. So 2 minus 8 is minus 6. So x minus 6 equals 0. So then x equals plus 6. Make sure you always put the sign. That's very important. All right. So in that case, the oxidation number of sulfur in sulfuric acid is plus 6, and the way we represent that is we draw that on top, so plus 6 up there. Let's look at another example. Find the oxidation number of P in this molecule here, and notice there's a charge now. So we're going to do the same thing. So 2 times plus 1, because that's the oxidation number of hydrogen here, plus X which is our phosphorus that we're looking for, plus 4 times minus 2 for the oxygens that we had there. This time, rather than equaling 0, it's going to equal minus 1. So we've got 2 plus x uh, minus 8 equals minus 1. So 2 minus 8 is minus 6 again. So x minus 6 equals minus 1. So x equals plus 5. So the oxidation number of phosphorus there is plus 5. So we write that on top. So let's look at an example. So in this case, we're trying to figure out whether chromium is being oxidized or reduced in this case. So we're going to look at the, find the oxidation number of chromium over here and over here. So we'll do the same process. So this time we've got 2x because we've got two chromiums. So 2x, 7 oxygens, so 7 times minus 2. 
that equals minus 2, that's our charge there. So 2x minus 14 equals minus 2. So we add 14 to both sides, so 2x equals plus 12. x equals 12 on 6 equals plus 6. So in this case, chromium over here, the oxidation number of chromium is plus 6. If we have a look on this side, we're going to go back to one of our rules from a little while ago. If we go back, the oxidation number of a monatomic ion equals the charge of that ion. So the charge of the chromium ion here is plus 3, so the oxidation number is simply plus 3. Okay, so we've gone from plus 6 to plus 3, that means the oxidation number has decreased. So if we go back here, the oxidation number has decreased, that means the chromium has been reduced in that case. So in this case, it's reduced. Okay. Do one final example. We'll look at sulfur in this case. So sulfur dioxide going to the sulfate ion, is it being oxidized or reduced? So over here, we've got X plus 2 times minus 2 equals 0 because there's no charge up here so x minus 4 equals 0 so x equals plus 4 remember to always write the charge down over this side we've got x plus 4 times minus 2 equals minus 2 because we've got a charge up here so x minus 8 equals minus 2 so x equals plus 6. So add 8 to both sides and we get plus 6. So if we write those up here, so we've got plus 4 here and plus 6 here. Go back to our rule. If the oxidation number increases, then this, the element is being oxidized. So in this case, we're going from plus 4 to plus 6, so that means it's being oxidized. It's getting bigger. Alright, so that's a look at oxidation numbers and oxidation states and how to find them. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.